Oh, sorry if I was super loud. Okay, I'm coming. All right. Okay. We have Hello. Right way out now. So now we should stop. be sideways, I hope. I started it and... You know, it is that. the trickiest thing to get it to be correct, but to get it to be side to side, you have to jump through some hoops. Let's just say that. So welcome. Welcome to Pandemic Pantry. We were trying to work out what week this is, and we've lost track. It's either six or seven. Yeah, it's um, uh, uh, yeah. So that's good. Um, and I'm just looking at your... Comments, everybody. Um, Betty Saunders is watching. Hi. Hi, good morning. I am Adrienne Gordon, the director of 50 Plus Ministries. And I am Kate Wheaton, director of hospitality at First United Methodist Church in Clarendale. Yes. We are so excited to have you back again today. Yes. Um, while Adrienne plays, I'm just going to, um, I'm not going to play this one, but I'm just going to stir. Yeah. Are you, oh, yeah, you could stir in rhythm. I'm stirring rhythm. Here we go. <laughs> Cathedral and Kate and I would have been there to see because 50 plus had a trip planned to go. So we're just so excited for Jay for his graduation, his virtual graduation. Virtual graduation, yay. So congratulations. La, 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 la. Congrats, Grad. Yeah. Woohoo! Yeah. yeah. So um, but we will be postponing that trip for another time. So congrats, Jay. Today is your special day. And we have um, a devotion. We do. And I'm gonna turn down the volume. <laughs> Yeah. 
Yeah, but I had never we forgot to tell you that you can do that on top of your roast chicken too, but you put it in the oven. Do you remember when we put yes. you can put that paper on the top? Anyway, Which I never we digress. Mm -hmm. So got our flour, got our butter, just switch it on, and you're just gonna rumble it around until you've got breadcrumbs. Okay. So that's gonna be quick. And while we do that, just gonna crack a little egg in here. No, <laughs> what? Just bear with us. <laughs> Never like this on live TV. It's part of the process. Mm -hmm. At least I can get the clouds and That's right. the clouds. Oh. It's working? Yeah. So really it's really good that quick. So in there I've just got roughly chopped up butter now. I can just Feel that it's a little breadcrumbs, and that's it. That's all you have to do. Yeah. It's a bit like when we started our scone mixture. It's just the same process. If you had done it by hand, you would just rub and drop. And then I've broken an egg into there. Um, you don't have to use an egg. It just slightly enriches the pastry. You can just use cold water. So we're going to do a little of each, and you're just going to add it until it begins to come together. Um, and it's more obvious than you might think. You want to be, head, you know, don't add it all at once. It's a pretty fancy thing, but here it goes. You can join me with you. Um, you that's it. Yay! So as quick as that, and that's how I made pastry. Yes, and so, we already sliced strawberries for it. Would you like me to slice some more strawberries? I would love you to slice okay. some more strawberries. And I'm going to show you what Kate showed me, which you probably already know, but she said anytime you slice fruit, you want to go along the natural line of the fruit. Is that what right, the yes. shape of the fruit yes. so that you're enhancing in your little slices, like mini because strawberries. Because I was slicing this way, but mm -hmm. so you're really supposed to slice long ways on the strawberry. So, um, so she showed me that this morning, and my mind was blown, frankly. <laughs> I was like, but I never knew that. No one ever showed me that. Okay. And so then she's showing us. A little more chaotic in our kitchen this morning. Um, I think we've just got a lot of things going on as usual. But here's our pastry. This is what it looks like when it comes out and it's soft. So unlike bread dough, you just want to lift and fold to the middle gently. With bread, you're like pushing and kneading to develop that gluten. We don't want to develop gluten in our pastry. We just want to bring it round into a nice ball, turn it around and pat it down. And then at that point, you are just going to surround wrap it and pop it in the fridge. So you could make that you know, ahead of time. You could make four or five of those and just keep them in the freezer and then just pop them out whenever you want to make something. Mm. And as is our way, we have one we prepared earlier. Yes. Um, and the reason you want to rest that too, um, I'm talking about the gluten. What happens if you don't rest it is that when you're rolling out, you know, you roll to your 12 inch pipe size and then, you know, you turn around a minute and it, you know, it creeps back in mm -hmm. and it shrinks. And that, of course, is what will happen in the oven too, and so you'll get leaky, leaky tarts because you know the edges will slowly drop. Yes. Um, while you will probably going to get covered in flour. Okay, so this is our flour pastry from earlier. My giant rolling pin. Mm. Do you call it a rolling pin? Yes, we call it a rolling pin. Okay. I'm always that was it. That right. Let's see. Good. Anyone said anything? Okay, hello. Um, Betty Saunders said, I hope your strawberry tart will be as good as your lemon tart was. Well, we're oh. going to do our best, Betty. Skip said, I love fresh strawberries. Actually, that's probably Skip and Terry. Hey, guys. I love fresh strawberries, too. They were, they're were they delicious. Oh, um, let's get when daycare opens. So oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, when is the daycare? Yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, not sorry, but I am sorry. <laughs> uh, Slightly Glenn, more relaxed. Yeah, he's, but I do keep looking out the window looking yes. for him, and he's not here. Um... Uh, Glenn Alberton, you two are too cute. You're sweet. Uh, Grace Cook's watching too. Hi. And Skip is sharing. Thank you. And then my handsome fiance, Russell, is watching hey, too. Russell. Hi. Okay, so another tip with your pastry is as you're rolling it, you want to just roll away from you and you want to give it little quarter turns. And then you'll end up with somewhat of a, of a circle. You won't just end up with a giant rectangle. And we want to go fairly far out. Are you all strawberry cut? Well, I sliced two. Do you want me to slice more than that? I mean, Let's how many do we need? Got. There? Oh, no, we've got that whole pot. We're That's good. Okay. wonderful. Okay, good. All right, so simple as that. And 
then of course now we caught up to those people who have just bought the pie sheet because <laughs> yours will just unwrap and look like that. But you know that really wasn't such a big no such a big time. So you just roll it onto your rolling pin. I'll do that one more time. So you just roll it, roll it towards you to pick your pastry up. Okay. I have to write myself a little note to say put it on the sheet, pastry sheet before you before you fill it. When I made one this morning, I forgot. All right, so we've rolled our pastry onto there. Ooh. So another little trick is I've got some ground almonds here, and I'm just going to almond put flour. Almond flour, thank yes. you. Yes. And we are going to put those in the middle, and that is going to help absorb any sort of extra strawberry juice to keep us with a crispy bottom. Any of you British baking fans know that we need a crispy bottom. We need a crispy bottom. Oh, and you can go ahead and stick that in there. That is two teaspoons of corn flour. Put mm -hmm. it in where? In, in there. there. Okay. Corn, corn starch. And two teaspoons of sugar. So a very small amount of sugar. Um, and I... Mm -hmm. The recipe didn't call for it very much because the strawberries are so sweet. Spoon. So that's literally 600 grams, so about 8 ounces. Betty, over you. 8 ounces. Betty said, I have been slicing strawberries in the wrong direction all my life. Me yes. too. And they're so much prettier when you cut them the other They way. really are. Um, okay, so look, oh. we have just... Let me give you these. Oh, yeah. Lovely jugs. That's it. So Yay. corn, corn starch, sugar. Mm-hmm ground almonds, and then we're literally going to tip our strawberries. Oh my goodness, they smell heavenly. Heavenly, they really smell heavenly. So good. Okay. And you know, more sugar isn't a plus. Um, they get carried away and add too much more sugar because it begins to make the juices from the fruit come out when you put the sugar on. So if you Hi. think, gosh, I'm just going to double up on the sugar, I like it sweet, then you're going to get more moisture and it's going to be not so good. Okay, that's good. Um, cracked an egg earlier, so I have egg here. If you don't want to use egg or you don't have one, you can just use water. Um, so we're now going around the edge of our pastry. Um, and the reason that we're wetting it is so that it will stick to itself. So it doesn't all come unfolded as we mm -hmm. pop it in the oven. So you want to do about three centimeters, about an inch and a half around the edge. And then we can let our strawberries go down a little bit. Oh, that looks Aww. incredible. And then really all you're going to do, and you could do this, you know, this is so basic it would work for anything. We bought beautiful peaches, didn't we? Also at the yes. farm. You could do peaches. I bet you could do peaches and strawberries. That would mm -hmm. be yummy together. What about blueberries? <gasps> blueberries would be good okay. in there. You could even probably do half and half. Wouldn't that be nice if you did like peach and blueberry one side? Well, for and then you did July the fourth, you could do blueberries, strawberries, and then put powdered sugar on top. Oh, yes, yes, we do whipped cream. Okay, so then literally, look, we just, you can be as fancy or as not. We just want to fold it around to make a case. Okay. And I mean, it really can be that basic. And you could get real fancy if you had time, and you could just cut out small circles and make individual ones. We're just going to give it a bit of a pinch to give it some sort of texture. And excitement. <laughs> it's got to have excitement. It's got to have a little character. <laughs> and that is it. And I'm going to use the rest of my egg wash to go on the outside. You could do milk if you wanted to do that instead. It's not going to have any more sugar on it. I'm really we're saving the rest of our calories as or it were. whipped cream. Mm -hmm. Vanilla ice cream, whipped cream, Greek yogurt. Mm -hmm. oh, all of the above. But that's going to make it super pretty. Yum. So, as, as is today's theme, we have one we prepared ahead. So we are going to slide this in the refrigerator and bake it this afternoon. But that yes. is our rustic tart. Yes. So that's a good one. That looks incredible. All right. So we have our two-minute tidy. And then we're going to press on to talking about this tomato sauce. We need a tidying song. A tidying song? The clean-up song? The clean-up song. The clean-up song. It's time to clean up the kitchen. She's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Just a quiet moment of cleaning. Um, so in the pan behind me, we started our sauce earlier. This pan. We wanted to make a homemade tomato sauce. Um, this is sort of starting with thinking about batch cooking. You can make a large batch of healthy, hot, healthy um, tomato sauce. Um, you can hide all of your vegetables in there if you've got picky eaters. Um, it's super, super 
that's easy for not. It's easy to easy to make. Um, and this is what we've done. You've got a little flower on your cheek, oh, just you? so you know. Just like right here. Yes. Here. Oh. Right here. Flower on your cheek. Got it. Flower on my phone. Flower everywhere. Everywhere. Okay, so we put a little picture up so you could see what we already had in here on our Facebook page. But we've got celery, um, onions. I have Spanish onion. We have carrots. I didn't have a big carrot. I just had little carrots, so I chopped some of those up. And we have just softened those for four or five minutes, um, maybe a little longer, until they're kind of translucent. So that's the base of our sauce. And we just did that in olive oil. Um, mm -hmm. If you're sticking to your heart healthy theme, you know you're going to use your Mrs. Dash. So I think that's what we'll put in here. And I have a question when you're ready about strawberry tart. Yes. Mom said, Amanda Welch Gordon said, what if I don't sweeten the strawberries at all? You don't need to. I, I think that's absolutely fine. They're sweet enough. They're already very sweet. Mm -hmm. If you go strawberry picking. <laughs> yeah. Because those really are, you can tell the difference in those strawberries. And if you notice, I didn't actually put any sugar in my pastry either. Um, you could put a teaspoon of sugar in there if you wanted to, but no, I, I really, like we were saying, I like to save that little bit of sugar for something I'm really going to enjoy, like the ice cream. Mm -hmm. So that has sweated, as we would say, so now we are going to add to it and pop it back on the heat, but we're going to add to it, um, we smashed up some garlic, and I had a chili. Uh, if I had had peppers, I would have put peppers in there, but we've used those in something else. Mm -hmm. So we're going to stick that back on the heat for a second, okay, and let that do do something. Um, and then we also, oh yes, I put, hmm, oh, tidy, <laughs> tidy. We've also got, which we could put in here, I have a zucchini left from when we, from way back when we baked zucchini yes. cakes, so that can just go in there too. Right. So it's a great way to put lots of um, lots of veggies in, and in fact I've got a big bag of spinach, we're going to use some for strawberry salad, but we can put a couple of handfuls of that in there too. Um, mm -hmm. But by the end, unless you choose to see the vegetables, we're going to whiz it up and liquidize it, and you, you know, you won't know they're there, but you're going to get the benefit of them. And little people, like children who maybe don't like their vegetables, mm -hmm. they will have no idea they're there. Absolutely. <laughs> um, okay. So as soon as that comes back up, we'll let them do that. Okay. And then we've just got two big, big cans of um, crushed, I think I got crushed tomatoes. So you can get whatever you've got in the pantry, or so four small cans, two big cans, they don't all need to be the same, crushed, plum, sometimes you get them with garlic in, sometimes mm -hmm. you've got, you know, whatever. But try and pay attention if you're trying to be heart healthy, obviously, to the amount of sodium on the side. Sometimes the cheaper brands have got more sodium. Yes. Um, but we were looking at the jars of tomato pre-done sauce. I mean, yes. it's less than half. It's more like a quarter of the amount of, of sodium. So yes. That's good. That is good. All right. So while that simmers down, I think mm -hmm. we'll just wait for that. And okay. We'll start our turkey. Turkey lurky. Turkey lurky. Gobble, gobble. Mm -hmm. We've got our turkey in the fridge. We've got two pounds of ground turkey. Mm -hmm. We make turkey meatballs. Yummy, yummy, yummy. Adrian's going to make turkey meat. Yes, and Kate likes to have me stick my hands into raw meat. <laughs> raw birds. <laughs> Go for it. If you watched last week, then you know that I put my hands into the whole uh, young chicken and kind of pull things out, and I was not prepared for that. <laughs> not ever thought you would have to do. Yeah. All right, we've got a cup of... Um, this is a mixture, actually. This is ground almonds, plain flour, and some breadcrumbs to give me about a cup of, you know, starchiness. If you've got a packet of um, stuffing, you know, is that what you call it? Dressing? Yes. You could use that. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, top, pop that in. Okay. Um, we wanted to give ours a fun Thai flavor um, for something different. We, this time we bought Thai curry paste. Um, so probably two giant spoonfuls of that. Okay. We have this in... My pantry. Oh. One egg. Mmm, that smells great. Mmm. I think I got a little overexcited. Mom, Easter eggers? Yes! I love happy eggs. Look at that. Oh, these came from happy chicken. I didn't have fresh basil, but I've got dried basil. Basil oh, is really good with <laughs> with Thai. So we're gonna pop in some dried basil. Yes. That looks so good. It smells so good. Yes. 
we're done with them? Yes. Please. And then would you like to slice? Sure. So we're going to use green onions. If you don't have green onions, red, regular. And then we're going to pop a um, garlic clove in there too. Even though hmm. a, a jar of sauce is good, but it kind of lacks a little fresh zing. It's nice if you can add some. How am I doing, Kate? You are, you are doing it. <laughs> Honest with me about what she thinks. <laughs> you were doing an awesome job. You are doing it. <laughs> just stirring this sauce. The um, spinach is wilting, just like we want it to. It's, just, it's a bit of a slow process making tomato sauce, but it's rather mindful and relaxing. Um, and it's extra relaxing because you're going to end up with a lot of it, and it's going to save you time all through the week or through the month. Mm -hmm. So while you're doing that, I'm going to dance around you. All right. Dance, dance. And I'm going to take over this little clove of garlic. So actually, I saw something the other day that I've forgotten about. If you pour hot water, like boiling water, over a garlic cube and just a garlic clove, and just wait for a minute or two, then the skin is going to come off. We just usually crush it. Look at that. That's enormous. That is huge. How far am I going on here? Um, all, the, yeah, all the way? Pretty much, all the way up. And just try and keep them, like as you get nearer the top, they get a little tougher. So thin as you can go as you get to the top. Do my best. Um, so I just crush it and then that's easy to just pull it with your garlic out of there. Easy, she says. Yeah, that's a scary word on live. Oh, it's the best. Look at that. Am I doing okay? You are doing it. Look. Yay! Kate's, Kate's approval is what I live for. <laughs> the crowds go wild. You got it. You got it. Speaking of the crowds going wild, Susan Cooper sang on, um, in worship yesterday. Uh, and it was so beautiful. It really was. And she did say, if you're around today, ooh, I'm starting to cry. Um, should I put these in here? Yeah. If you are um, near the church today, honk your horn to let Jay know how proud we are of him. Oh, yeah. And so, honk, honk. We're not there, but honk, honk. <laughs> no, maybe we can find something to improvise before the end of the show. Yes. Yeah. Here we go. So, a little roughly chopped garlic. If you don't have that, you could use garlic salt. Um, mm -hmm. You could slide that in there, too. Okay. Back to stirring. A little multitasking. Yes. Okay, we're stirring so it doesn't catch on the bottom. Yes. It it's beautiful. Can you smell that? It smells can you, really can you, good. Would you like to do it to the pot? Yeah, you want to do it to the pot? Sure. Okay, everybody, come with me. And we're walking. We're walking and we're looking. It'd be like your ma, your glasses. Did that steam you up? Yes, but it looks, well, well, not really. Oh, yeah, Mary Brown. Kate was laughing about your post. Uh-huh. Look at that. Yum. Yes. We saw something funny today. It said, breathe in with your mask and your glasses on. And then when you breathe out with your mask and your glasses, you know, they steam up. <laughs> Which I haven't fully experienced wearing my mask in the stores. If I wear my glasses into the store, I oh. can't see. <laughs> yeah. All right. Okay. So I think that's done sufficiently for me. I mean, I'm happy with that. They, it smells good. My garlic has just softened a little bit. My vegetables are beginning to take on color. My spinach is wilted. And so good. now I'm going to go on and tip in our two big pans. You want to give it a stir? Sure. 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 So one thing I forgot that I like to add in mine too, just for some extra extra happy um, would be some of these stalks. This is flat leaf parsley. And we're just going to throw in some stalks from that too. Okay. Just a little extra, extra green. Um, that's good for us. Mm -hmm. So really, you are just going to ignore that. We're going to just um, okay. give it a stir around and then put it on a super low heat and let it just do its thing. Perfect. Yay. Okay, so now else goes in there. I think we're going to do an extra little squeeze, just a couple of inches of lemongrass, because we had that left in the fridge from when we made something earlier in the week. What did we make with lemongrass? Uh, what did we make with lemongrass? It wasn't the chicken. No, it must have been good. What did we make last week? It was um, chicken. No, it wasn't last week, maybe it was the week. 
Oh, well, maybe. Wasn't enchiladas. Well, there you go. But <laughs> respite. <laughs> respite. We're coming. There we go. Oh. That's why. Right, right. Oh, thank you. Russell complimented my overhead shot. Luann called. Hello. We're so glad y'all are here. Yay. Yeah. Good he's... group. All right. <laughs> oh, crash. Okay, should I start stirring this around with my hands? Or? Yes, I would like you to put your hands in there and squeeze it. Oh, I actually look forward to that. So when we went to the supermarket um, to find it, we, we couldn't get the turkey, you know, exactly as we wanted. They didn't have a lot of it. And I've heard people saying that meat is a little harder to come by. Um, yes. So we've been thinking about perhaps what we'll do next week. Some people have asked for some quiche or frittatas. So perhaps we'll just focus on a, a vegetarian twist next week so that we can think about yes. and meat's a lot more expensive. Mm -hmm. um, but just some hearty, you know. And it's harder to find like exactly what cut you want and every yes. exactly, exactly what you're looking for. And I for don't... those of you who don't like the word vegetarian, don't let that trigger you. Just think um, meatless. Yeah, it's meat free. I mean, it still doesn't have cheese and eggs yes. and deliciousness. Um, and, and maybe a meat option like we've done. Yes. We did the black bean chili. You could still put bacon or Ooh, something on the top. Really yeah. oh, you are. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Um, yeah, I'm enjoying so the this main, too much. The main thing you need to be thinking about is your squeezing is that you've separated all of that Thai paste. Yes. It's not just all in one meatball. Right. All right. And when you feel like you're there, I'm just going to put in a little bit of extra seasoning. So we're just going to top in a little bit. Garlic salt, a little bit of lemon pepper, all my go to's. Yum. Yum. And really, this is just, you know, prompting you with a fun idea. You could do, um, you know, just a basic. You could have done really finely diced carrots, celery, and mm -hmm. um, onion in there, and just done a more traditional meatball. You could uh, do could something you a little more raw. Shaved yeah. carrots? Shaved carrots. Um, then you're good. And then okay. they say that mixture divides between, depending how big your meatball is, you can do up to 40. We did 30 earlier, okay. um, and that seemed to work. So That's we're too big, do, isn't it? Yeah, they're going to be like an inch and a half, like this. Like a golf ball. Okay. I can, like a golf ball. I can visualize a golf ball. All right. Okay, here we so are. And you're molding that as I'm going back just for another. That's a big golf ball. Another mm -hmm. little stuff. Let me rein it in. So let's go back to talk about the tomato sauce for a minute, because... Something fun to show you. So, with the whole batch cooking idea, um, we made you know tomato sauce ahead, so we've got some to use today. But then I froze it in a muffin tin. So look, we've got a muffin is half a cup, um, oh. and so then you can put those in a little ziploc bag or pack them. So if you're just cooking for one or two. Um, or you just want to throw that into something else that you're doing, you've got homemade tomato sauce. Um, so that's kind of handy. Genius. In fact, we have we have talked about this over and over, is having one an episode, uh, or maybe even a side episode, cooking for one or two, especially focusing on meal prep and like, you know, just kind of having something that you can just throw in the oven. Or at, least have, freezer and yeah, or at least have part of it done. So if even for one or two, or when you're coming home from work, and you you know at least something is already done to get you started. So we're I'm kind of into funky pasta at the moment. So this is chickpea pasta, and today we cooked red lentil pasta. Um, just has less carbs and more veggies inside you mm -hmm. um, in there too. So it's all sneak them in wherever you can. Yeah, I know. Just trying to be good. So this is just packed in. It was two ounces of uncooked pasta, so it turns out to be quite a lot. Um, so there it is. That's just frozen. I topped it with a little olive oil and some seasoning and then pop it in little bags. So those are in my freezer for another time. And then this is the one that we're going to use today. So let's pop those back. Okay. And I'm, I think these can be fairly close together. Did they, they, they shrink? They do shrink a little bit, yes. It's not like a cookie. You know, they don't need room to... Right. Yeah. Okay. Good. Those are monster meatballs. Are they too big? No, they're fine. <laughs> no, that's okay. They're good, good. <laughs> I'm just teasing. They'll be perfect. All right. So well, I would offer to help, but I'm just going to watch you do it. Well, yeah, it's kind of a messy mm -hmm. activity. I'm almost done. I can do this. I'm trying I'm to get therapeutic and relaxing. 
It actually really is, and I actually made chicken, um, ground chicken meatballs the other day at home, and I had a lot of trouble getting them to stick together. So I think I needed a binding agent. I did. Did you put eggs in it? There was one egg, mm -hmm. but I, I followed a recipe. It said nothing about you know almond flour or anything like that, and I really think right. I should have. My instincts told me to add almond flour, and I just. I should have listened. I should have followed them. It was the voice of Kate in my head, telling me, <laughs> "Come on now, come you on, know girl. better." Um, Somewhere in here, there is a spray olive oil. Oh, it was in the pan. It was in. It was in the. Um, it was in the pan. It was. It was in. The, here it is. Okay, okay good. Woo! <laughs> Respite. Here oh, we go. I thought we were not together today, but here we go. So this is a hundred percent virgin oil spray. If you don't have that, you can just drizzle. Mm -hmm. um, but after Adrian's done them, basically, we're just going to spray over our meatballs and slide them into the oven. And the recipe tells us to do just 10 minutes, open the oven, 400 degrees, mm. 10 minutes, and then flip them over and do 10 minutes on the other side. And then they'll be crispy and small. They, sh they do shrink. Um, okay. I'm almost done. Um, if you're looking for something to do this week, we actually have several fun activities. On Thursday, we have, um, Kate and I usually prep on Thursday, but before we do that, on Thursday morning, we are going to talk about COVID scams. Mondi Donaldson works at the Better Business Bureau of South Alabama, and there's a longer part of the title, and I can't remember off the top of my head, but there is an event on the 50-plus page um, that you can go and, um, you know, just to get the details, but it's at 930 on Facebook Live. We're going to be having a Zoom chat, and you can ask any questions you have. They are they they're abreast of a lot of the scams that have happened and how to prevent getting trapped in those scams. Yes. I have I, I actually almost fell for one the other day. So we can talk about our um, like what's valid and what's not. Because we yes. have other things on the radio, you know, about whether you've lost money on the stock market yes. or what you should do, and, and it'd be good to know and if this that's really good advice or not. There's no age limit on falling for scams. This could happen to a college student. This could happen to, you know, mm -hmm. anybody. Um, also, on Thursday, we're playing bingo at four. So if y'all want to play, we're going to have a nice, big, fun game. Oh, okay. that. Busy day on Wednesday. Yes, or Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> All right, so May 14th. Spritzing. And if you want to sign up for bingo, there is, uh, I'm putting the event up today, so you can sign up that way. That's or just it. call me. 239-4324. Cold, better cold soul. Okay, I'll be right back. Okay, and while she's gone, I was also going to tell y'all, we had another baked goods drive on Wednesday, and it was so awesome. It was so successful. We had about 1,250 baggies. Each baggie had two goodies in it, and we were able to deliver those to Jackson Hospital, Premier Anesthesia, and Baptist South, and Crown Rehab, which is actually oh, where my grandmother yes. was before she passed away. So it's, we were just so excited to put the amazing bakers of the church in touch with the people who were so grateful for getting them. So the medical workers, we're still doing masks y'all want to, but they were really happy to have cookies. <laughs> oh, they were super happy to have cookies. And um, yes, I haven't quite come up with what our next plan of action is. I'm not sure if we'll bake again. Um, I've got to do some follow-up phone calls and just see mm -hmm. what our next plan, but there'll be a next plan yes. of action and something else that everyone can get on board with yes. um, and get involved with. So just watch that space. Yes. And Adrian, you might like to show in this pot, because okay. this is really what we're looking for in here. Ooh, good. Okay, um, gonna... Oh, it smells like a, you know Italian grandmother's uh, kitchen in oh, here. it does. I'm not sure. My husband has Italian ancestry. I'm not sure whether my mother-in-law would approve. But, <laughs> um, you can see it's beginning to look rich and scrumptious, um, and it's getting thicker and thicker. So if you want to cook longer to intensify your flavors, you could add a little bit more water mm -hmm. in there. I mean, I think we're just going to let ours bubble away while we're cooking, and then we'll puree it at the end. But if you didn't want to puree it, um, you know, you're going to have those chunks of veggies. Mm -hmm. um, as I say, and if you if you are not if you don't have a liquidizer or you don't want to puree. Um, you could chop your veggies a lot smaller. I didn't, knowing that I was going to puree them. But if I had little people, I, I maybe would chop them super fine. Yes. Um, so okay. That's another option. So that's that. So that's that. Meatballs are done. 
Ooh, look, we're rocking along today. No. So now we're just going to quickly look at some bruschetta. This looks oh, like you, sure. this angle looks crazy. Does okay, that look, <laughs> okay, but we're like in line with your counter, so I don't understand, but let me just do an adjustment here. Oh, sorry, sorry, We are buddy. working on a wing and a prayer, although we did a lot of prayer. Um, okay, so also, I might come to you this time. Does that work? Uh-huh. Look, this is my, my oh, that might be very close. This is our tomato juice after we pureed it. So it's not as bright red once you puree, because obviously you've got that green in mm -hmm. there. But, oh, delicious. Delish. Okay, is that better? That angle is still, still seems a little sideways, but what you gonna do? There we go. I don't know, maybe it's the tripod. Are we having okay. technical difficulties? Should I battle on? This is good. You should battle on. Okay, so bruschetta. Here we go. We have got, um, <laughs> French bread. Now, unfortunately, we didn't get French bread over the weekend. They were out of the small sizes that I wanted. Mm -hmm. um, so you want the super teeny French bread. I find it at Publix myself. Um, and then when you cut it, you want to hold your knife at a 45. Don't just do flat rounds. Well, you can, but they're a bit boring. Um, mm -hmm. Hold your knife at a 45 degree angle and slice along. You're going to end up with some little slices like this. Mm -hmm. And we have left them out this morning and thankfully they've begun <laughs> to dry out. You know, words you think you wouldn't hear yourself say. <laughs> but we wanted it dried. Yes. Um, to make those little, little crispy. Um, and then I have four olives, rather a sad amount of olives left in the bottom of a jar. So I have just finely chopped those and put them with some olive oil. Um, and so they've been sitting there just steeping this morning. And really, I'm just going to drizzle all of those on top of my little Christine mm. today. Um, so that you can buy like an olive tapenade, which is really good to use if you've got sun dried tomatoes. You know, you can use the oil from that. It does have a bit of, flav bit of flavoring. <coughs> and so, the, uh, the underlayer. Yes. Mm. Um, or if not, just olive oil. So that's really what that is just olive oil on our little crustades. And just jiggle it all around so you've got some on the bottom, some on the top. Um, and this is rather an indulgent amount of olive oil. We could have just done the spritzer again. <laughs> but, you know, I like olive oil. I do too. And it makes it kind of adds to the whole flavor of yes. the, the dry taste, which is basically yeah. what it is. Okay, so then we're going to slide those in the oven. We, we know you could actually do that while we're, while we're working. Yes. Goat 
cheeks. Look, and then we'll just put them like this across here. And while you're doing that, I'm going to slice some little, look how teeny tiny, we had some whopper strawberries and then some, picked out some of the smaller ones for this. I feel like we got started on the row that a lady had already come and picked the big ones at that end. So once we, yeah. you know, started to wind down our strawberry picking, we found where the big ones were. And the whoppers. So mm -hmm. we were like, oh, here they are. All right. But we still, they were all beautiful, beautiful strawberries, except for the weird ones. That was weird. Like there was a strawberry plant growing through the top of a strawberry. Yeah, I'm sure Mama Amanda, that Amanda Borden could explain that to us. I actually haven't asked her yet, but I plan to, Mom, ask you why there were weeds coming out of the strawberry. I mean, the little holes in the strawberry had grass or whatever mm -hmm. growing strawberry. through the top. Okay, well, let's focus on a nice strawberry. Yes. Um, so if you see what I'm doing, I've cut my strawberry the way that we talked about it, taking off the top and then cutting through the length of the strawberry so you have the pretty shape. But if you can keep your strawberry together and then you can push it slightly sideways, that's going to fan it out, um, which just is a quick, pretty presentation to go on the top of our, our um, yeah, and then we were remembering that you could make um, strawberry salsa. That would be really nice. You could still do your lovely cheese at the bottom and a strawberry mm -hmm. salsa. You would use, um, you would use like maybe like a little green onion, your fresh strawberries, your cilantro, your lime. Ooh, yum! Um, and just have that piled on the top. That would be very pretty. Yum. That may not be enough strawberry on there. That was mine. I feel a bit hard done by. Let's do so pretty look. Let's do four and then maybe five more. Turn that off. I'm just gonna go back and um, add a couple of strawberries to that. Skinny mini over there. I think. There we go. I never liked goat cheese. Until I started, well, I guess it's an acquired taste, I feel. Because it doesn't taste like normal cheese, but my sister-in-law couldn't have dairy for a while. So that's why I started eating goat's cheese. And it is so divine, like this. On that yummy mm -hmm. treat that you're eating. So we've got another one of those. Remember mm -hmm. we used skinny avocado? Slimcado. Mm -hmm. Slimcado. Um, so we have one of those. And obviously when you choose an avocado, you don't want that bright green skin on the outside. You want it to be slightly, slightly darker. Mm -hmm. um, oh, that's so beautiful. It's that pretty. They're and sweeter too. If you keep it down on your board, take your knife, just go in and twist. And Never pop it out. That. And then you pop it off like this. My hat is off too. And then, do you want me to keep going with goat cheese or Let's I? do, I need one more. Okay. So we have nine. An odd number is always preferable. <laughs> I've learned so much from you. So here we go. We are sliding off the skin. Sliding. Well, we're not sliding. <laughs> we are trying we're to. We're trying to. I don't want to use the knife because then you get a nasty mm. pattern. It's much That's nicer. Something else I noticed pull. about slim cotto is they're very hard to peel. Mm -hmm. Look, oh, we've done it. Oh, oh, yay. Yay. We are pretty out of cotton. Mm, slice off down the good. middle. Then we're going to do the same thing. We're going to take little thin slices. And we want the slices that were next to each other because they're going to sit together. Woo sit together the best. Mm. Well, or not. <laughs> or not. We'll try that again in a minute. Okay. <laughs> we don't <laughs> want to sit together. The ever bit of nailed it, you know. Uh. It didn't. Okay, let's try that again. They're very slippy. So. Do as I say, not as You're I do. You're doing great. Is how that goes. You're doing better than I would. Okay. So there, look, we made a recovery. Oh, yes. Okay. That's so lovely. These are going to look pretty when they're done. This one is a bit of a reject. Let's just regroup them. Although it's a pretty avocado, it is definitely yellower on the inside <coughs> and prettier green on the outside. So, quite my fingers. Oh, and you 
show them this. So we have a balsamic glaze that you can find at the store that we are going to cheat with. Um, to and this is a squeeze top. bottle. Yes. <laughs> we had trouble with that as well earlier. <laughs> it's just vain. There's a learning curve to everything. Yes. <clears throat> so look at that. I'm just alternating those. And then we're going to make you a little artichoke mixture and do some yeah. hot, hot bruschetta too. Yum! These are so yeah. beautiful. We have a different demo today. It's going to be a lot to see at the end. You yes. Know, we had to do. Well, and we found out it's eat what you want day. Oh, yes, it is. So eat what you want. Eat what you <laughs> want. You'll be eating this. Yeah. <laughs> that. And then I'm going to drizzle, but I'm not going to drizzle till we get right to the end so that you can see the, yes. the natural beauty of all of that. We yes. are just going to move this to one side. So that's just a fun little appetizer. Mm -hmm. um, I think I would put just a little black pepper over the top. I'll show you that looks. Um, a little of our Malden sea salt. We need a new box of that soon. Over the top, even on the strawberries. Mm -hmm. um, and let's take that out of the way. Yes. I'm going to in here. I'm on the we are going to make artichoke dip. That is probably one of my favorite dips in the world, I must say. Yeah, so do you want to go ahead and squeeze this together? So this sure. is a, a can of artichokes that we've just roughly chopped. It's one cream cheese that I've already whipped together. I popped in. It said mayonnaise, but I used sour cream because it's a mayonnaise. Um, and so... Mm -hmm. So yum, yum, yum. And then it calls for two cups of cheese. So we've got a sort of mishmash. I have some gruyere. Oh, love well, some shoot. gruyere. Shoot, gruyere. Oh, gosh, had to use that up. Um, a little uh, parmesan. Mm. And then because we all love that stream, extra stream. Gruyere is always a good stream. There we go. A bit of mozzarella. Mm -hmm. Okay, and again we're going to do a little salt and pepper. Should we do that? Okay. Then we need one more baking tray. We go through a uh, mountain of parchment paper. <laughs> and by shares and something, it should be the yes. paper in the And saran wrap. Oh, yeah. So here we go. So I've got the grill preheated, and we are going to put some of our little bruschetta on here. Um, if you didn't want to be, you know, that time consuming, you could just pop it in a bowl and bake it. But we are going to pile some on here. Yes. So on top. Do you want to be the piler? Sure. I'm just going to pile like this. Yes. It says um, if you pile enough to cover the edges, then you won't get those little burnt. Oh, is that too much? Corners. No. If you splodge, and then maybe I'll move. Okay. That sounds good. Of a system. Mm. Mm. Splodging is hard. Yes, you could probably be slightly less generous. Oh, okay. Otherwise, I feel like it's going to run off. Okay. Because it's going to all melt. Melting deliciousness, good? yes. No, what are, we, what are we to do? What are we to do? Not even Winston is here. I know. What's a girl to do? I know. How shall we cope? <laughs> and then the rest of that can go, you know, as I said, we can. you could put that in a freezer container, stick that in the freezer for another time, you can put it in a dish, and then you can bake that separately. Mm -hmm. um, so it makes quite a lot. Yes. So actually, I could let you be the gorilla. Yes. Gorilla. The gorilla. All right, there it goes. I don't have oven gloves, so you have to be a cloth girl. Okay. All right, you're in charge of that, and I'll bring forward all the other bits and pieces, and we can start putting it all together, and you can see what it is that we were working, you know, how it all comes together. And what, I'm just watching this over here? Yes, you okay. should, like um, cheese tips, it should just okay. bubble and look right. delicious. I got it. Oh. 
do one more wipe down with our Lysol. Yes. Oh my gosh. Jeannie Ketzler, those look delicious. Thank you. Yes, they do. Oh. Yeah, sorry, it's been a funny demonstration today. It feels a little disjointed, but it, there was just sort of moving parts um, that were very hard to show you to completion in the time that we have. But hopefully, it's given you some skills. And when you reflect back or have a go, it's all going to come together for you perfectly well. So, our bowl is ready for our pasta. Bring these over, ready for us to drizzle. Here. Oh, Make a powder sugar, but this is what your oh, sugar tart is going to look like. And then with your cream. Oh, and then the last thing that we were going to do, just to celebrate strawberries one more time, is a quick spinach and strawberry salad. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we can put some of that spinach in our, in our pasta sauce, and then the rest of it has gone in our bowl. So we have pre-sliced some more strawberries. We're just gonna toss on the top. We have toasted pecan pieces that just go on the top of that. And then you're just gonna quickly slice some red onion to go on top of that. If anybody is making a strawberry salad for the first time, big so that if people don't like it they can just simply pick it out rather than trying to hide it for adults. Um, I don't like finding onion in there. Okay, these, these, these Oh look, okay. yum yum. Perfect. Okay. I'm turn this off. And then I don't know if any of you have got one of these. This is like the most glorious thing. You can buy them on Amazon. They're about ten dollars I think. Um, and it's a dressing Pot. I don't know if you can see from there, but it has ingredients on the side like the balsamic vinaigrette, sesame ginger vinaigrette, chili lime, mm -hmm. um, and it has all the measurements and you can kind of see where you could substitute something as you went along. So you could just buy a jar of strawberry salad to go on there or you could drizzle some balsamic vinegar um, and olive oil over the top mixed together, which I think is what we're going to do today. And that's going to be our pretty pretty salad mm -hmm. and really I like to just put all of my stuff on the top because then as you go to stir it begins to toss its way through mm -hmm. um, and you know, I like cooking by color too so the other fun you know I think at church we do the salad quite often in the evening and we'll put a handful of just darker berries in there because that just accentuates everything oh, else. I love blueberries on my salads. Mm -hmm. Of that, so then actually, I have a little bit of strawberry vinaigrette in here. So, we're just for glossy picture purposes, we're just going to drizzle some of that on the top. Um, but, yes, if you don't have one of these, they actually have a lid. I, I don't have my lid to hand, but then you, you make your dressing in here, shake it all up, and you can just keep it in the refrigerator. Oh. And then you have any weird additives, and you can adjust it to exactly the way you yes. want it. Um, yeah, put that on your registry. Okay. Your Registry sure, item, sure. check. Okay, so you want to find out my balls? Yes. So, I'm just going to put this together for you to see what we have. These meat balls. Yep. Yes. Okay. These are our meat balls. Look at these. Look at these. See the vegetables in there. Yes. I'm going to put three in each because it's been a hard morning. <laughs> we deserve it. <laughs> we can eat anything we want today. Because it's eat what you want day. <laughs> and then this is our gorgeous um, tomato sauce. Thinner if you want. 
want to then mm. it to go around and then on top of that we have our lovely flat leaf parsley so perhaps chopping would be good all the things my mother said don't do don't chop on the countertop <laughs> but i did it she did it okay it's done and our little parsley on the top beautiful so that's our fun little twist on Italian. And then, yes, we were saying that the balsamic glaze is quite squirty. So we were going to squirt. Let me get closer so you can see. Just a little across the top there. Mmm. And she has, did you talk about the chocolate? Oh, yes. And then if you wanted to, you know, we've got some flavored balsamic. You could use this. This is Expresso balsamic. This is dark chocolate balsamic vinegar. Yum. Um, you know, you can get brave and drizzle something different on there. That sounds amazing. So I have to remember not to talk too loud. Ones. There's our yummy pasta. There's our strawberry salad. Beautiful. There's our strawberry tart. And then last but not least, we can put our little artichoke. Chats. Yes. Can't forget our artichokes. Sorry I'm so loud. I forget them by the camera and then I start shouting. Look at that. That looks incredible. So those are going to come out and we'll just use up some of our pretty. We've got some mint uh, that we can just maybe stick on the side of our tart. Look how pretty that looks. And let's use a little bit of parsley. Kate is all about presentation. She knows how to make it look good. And something to make it pop. And we're gonna put some parsley in the middle there. Oh, look at that. Yay! Yay. And if you have thoughts and suggestions and feelings for what we should cook next, please let us know. We always love your suggestions. So this is our little celebration for strawberries. So I hope you get to go strawberry picking too. Um, send us some pictures of you in the fields if you do, and I hope you get to try all of these things and that you find these recipes useful in your kitchen. Yes. And now we're going to sing our way out. We're going to sing us out, everybody. We hope you had a good eat what you want day. Now you can make everything displayed. Woo. Don't be antsy. Thank you for bearing with us. Yeah. And don't forget to hump for Jay. Hump.